what's the deal y'all this your boy king here the great coming at y'all with another video subscribe hit the like button for me and i want to talk about met the master kyle 2000 album as a part of the death jam renaissance in 1998 now what people don't know is that this album was really originally supposed to came out in two in 1996 but due to delays and due to a lot of changes it came out two years later in 1998, and plus that's when business started booming again for Dead Jam. And a lot of people wasn't really feeling this release. They thought that Meth went total weird on this joint. If you look at the cover, you look at the cover, you look at the video Judgment Day, the sound itself was weird because, you know, Wu-Tang was going into a weird phase itself with... The Bobby Digital release as well. So Meth was kind of following that vein. But if you really listen to the album, it's a vintage Wu-Tang album. It wasn't... See, what people fail to realize is they were looking at it like, man, there's no brain to pain or release your deaths up here. But the sound had evolved. Now... See, with Meth, he originally didn't even want to put out any solo albums. He was happy with just being a part of the team. But if you really look, go to a Wu-Tang show, I've been to a couple. Meth the man be having the ladies going crazy. He didn't even want to be a sex symbol. That's why he will look all rugged. Uns unscuffed beard, glass eye, razor blade in the mouth. He didn't want to become a sex symbol. But if anything, the ladies flocked to him more, <laughs> unfortunately for him. But going into this album here, this album is fire. The Wu-Tang sound is there. It was nothing really commercial on here, aside from the song Breakups the Makeups with D'Angelo, and that was even dope. Because one thing Meth can do, Meth can make some dope songs for the ladies. That joint is Sweet Love. Whew, that joint is dope. Now, I'm going to give y'all something that a lot of people don't know about. Suspect Chin Niggas was a, was, a, was a nori diss, according to what I've observed. Especially when Street Life go in and talk about bitches sucking your dick on the skit, you ain't thug. And Nori, Nori at the time was pushing that thug, thug, that super thug thing at the time. He was just coming out. So, that beat there caught, captured the feature, the Wu-Tang, the vintage Wu-Tang sound along with Torture. Torture, what they was calling out, Biters. Because I remember reading the magazine a long time ago. I met the man was like, yo, but Deception of John with Fat Joe using the John Blaze. I don't want nobody else using our sound. So, then you had some other joints, Gridiron Rap, Play for Keats with Mob Deep, um, Left Eye, she snapped on Cradle Rock, she really blazed on that song, I was not expecting that, um, Big Dogs with Red Man, that was pretty good. The Judgment Day single, I liked it. I mean, a lot of people didn't like it. That one, along with Dangerous Grounds, they both came out around the same period. Because cause I think of what they were doing, because if you know the Street Life was featured on a lot of songs, they were trying to push Street Life. But going, but going back to this here, the only thing that, I, that a lot of people did not like was the skits. This nigga had about at least about 10 skits on this album. And they were from a lot of celebrity friends, like from Chris Rock, Janet Jackson, 45, known then as Donald Trump, Ed Lover. I mean, I'm cool with skits, but I think he kind of OD'd on that one. He OD'd on the skits. But the overall album, if you really take out the skits, is pretty dope. I mean, 
it didn't have that raw Wu Tang sound that you could hear that you could hear back like from ninety four ninety five. But this, you could tell the sound evolved. It was still hard. And Meth man, his his bars were sharp. He really stepped this game up on this one. Because, you know, when you a fourth quarter release, you're going against Redman, you're going against DMX, you're going against Foxy. You got to go hard. And this album was dope, man. And also, big shout out to Steve Solaz, man, because we had him on the show. He was one of the engineers of this project. Very, very good guy, man. Very good guy. So, this was overall a dope album. Be sure to check it out, man, if you can. Don't let the critics persuade you otherwise. This is a real good project from Meth. So subscribe, hit the like button, holla.